Since the start of 2021, there's been a massive influx of new traders in the markets, a lot of new retail traders, the retail trading revolution, if you will, or if you want to call it the ape revolution, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same thing. And it's all very, very cool. Now, over the past year, year and a half, depending on when you're watching this, there's been a lot of crazy things that have been played out. And in all honesty, we can make a multi hour video just detailing all these different crazy stories. But I want to talk about one common pattern that we're really seeing spike in all of these stories. And that's the fact that there's a lot of people who are new to the markets, a lot of new retail traders who are shrugging their shoulders and they're saying, where are the regulators? Where is our protection? Why in the hell do all of these elitist Wall Street douchebags get away with the same thing time and time again? And really, that's what I want to talk about in this video. I actually have a little bit of a positive thing to update you all about. And basically, it goes like this. The wheels of justice are slow, but they are still turning. Or maybe another way to put that is karma's a bitch and it's catching up to a lot of people. Let's take a quick walk down memory lane. Let's go to about the end of January 2021 when GameStop and many other equities were going crazy and it was referred to as the shorts were getting screwed. We were in the middle of a short squeeze and Robinhood, among many other brokers, restricted trading. They took away the buy button and this had a lot to do with like high level fancy schmancy DTCC of like, okay, do you have enough capital? Here's our risk models. A lot of opaqueness in the situation. But the bottom line was they took away the buy button and they basically that meme with the dog of this is fine when everything was on fire. That was Robin Hood. And a lot of this, they deserve themselves. They their PR management was absolutely awful. And I don't want to get sued. So I have to say, allegedly, they allegedly lied to the face of the entire public and basically it took the mantra of OK, no, we're doing this for your protection, when in reality, they seem to be protecting themselves and their cronies on Wall Street, i.e. the DTCC, these regulators, these market makers, all of them. It seems like retail, the average person stood up in a very, very strong way and they were about to win. And right at the finish line, they got rugged. Now, obviously, this was January 2021. Let's fast forward to what's going on right now. Robinhood cuts hundreds of jobs as pandemic stock trading flurry slows. Stock trading app Robinhood plans to lay off 9% of its workforce. The company hired ferociously as it boomed in popularity during the pandemic, but the expansion was too quick, leading to overlapping job functions and other issues. Now, really, I would argue that there's quite a bit of meaning in these other issues, as in the public does not trust you. That's the other issues, which is far, far larger than just overlapping job functions. This rapid headcount growth has led to some duplicate roles and job functions and more layers in complexity than are optimal. The right decision to improve efficiency, increase our velocity, and ensure that we are responsive to the changing needs of our customers, according to the boy from Bulgaria himself. I'm talking about Vlad Tenev, the CEO and founder, one of the co-founders of Robinhood. Now, if you're reading this, you're like, probably your knee-jerk reaction is good. Like, they suck. But let's talk about that in just a second, because remember, these are people's jobs. But what I really want to dive into is these comments. Like, this is such of the issue. Like, I think karma is clearly catching up to them. In fact, if you look at Robin Hood, it just hit a new all time low of 938. Ever since its public debut, it is currently down 75 percent. And from its all time high, when mainstream media was still telling us to purchase it, it is down 89 percent. It's getting its teeth cut in. This seems to be a company that's pretty much on its deathbed, but they still haven't learned their lesson. The quote from Tenev right here. It's just PR bullshit. Just be honest. Be like, hey, we didn't know what we were doing. Like, just honesty. This is the whole problem with Robin Hood. Every single step of the way, they've made the worst PR decisions. They've lied to the public and they've taken no serious steps to earn the trust back from said public. It's just always canned bullshit like this. Hey, man, 
Things went nuts. We hired too many people. We made awful decisions. We couldn't be honest with the public for whatever reason. Just tell us the truth of what's going on. But time and time again, they go more of this corporate route of just bullshit things that their lawyers like spin up. So for whatever reason, I'm sure in a certain sense to protect themselves. And I wholeheartedly believe that it is digging themselves further and further into a hole. Now, do I think Tenev deserves this? Yeah, because I'm of the opinion that he lied to people when he's like, no, we're having no liquidity problem when they had a liquidity problem. We know that from internal documents. But it is still sad because people lost their job. There are probably just coders and engineers and other employees who just they had nothing to do with these decisions. They were just trying to make an app and now they're the ones. So this is just another example that we saw this many, many times of the people who end up really getting hurt, the people whose buy button was taken away and these employees who now are considered having a duplicate job. They're the ones who are losing their jobs. They're the ones who are getting hurt while Tenev is probably still a billionaire. So karma is catching up to them. I don't think they can outrun it for too long. But it is, it's a whole wild scenario what's going on that they lost 9% and the stock's at a new low. And like I said, I think it's on its deathbed. Now, depending on when you're watching this, you're going to find out more about Robinhood after the market closes on Thursday post-market earnings report. So I'm sure we're going to have some commentary there, but it doesn't sound good. It sounds like this thing is going down and down and down. Now, another crazy story you might remember way, way, way like this, it's actually insane. And I'm very happy that regulations and particularly the FBI caught up to this because this is some big, big money. Uh, wow, 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 wow. This will, if you don't know this story, your jaw will be on the floor. He built a $10 billion investment firm. It fell apart in days. So this is talking about Archegos and then also Bill Wong. So what happened here, the highest level? Check this out. The whole affair is indicative of the loose regulatory environment over the last several years. Archegos was able to hide its identity from regulators by leveraging through banks in what has to be the best example of shadow trading. Basically, doing highly leveraged shit and hiding it from the regulators, and it very well could have prevent, almost could have been a systematic risk. And we saw banks, two banks in particular, lose billions and billions of dollars. Now, to quickly explain how this all played out without getting like too, too specific, what happened here, maybe you remember Viacom, CBS, that like completely tanked. There was a massive, massive leverage position, but people didn't know about it. And the way they were able to pull this off is they had the bright idea that whenever they got close to 5%, because after you get over 5%, you have to file it publicly that you have more than five, they would run up to that line and then to increase their bet, they would do it through the derivatives markets, more particularly known as swaps. And they also had interesting things. It involved lying to banks and banks kind of just not caring. And then there was also one defensive strategy that I just absolutely love of how they were able to skirt regulators, get banks to not know what they were doing or the banks just didn't even care. Basically, this entire story is a full a bunch of greedy people and the regulators either knew about it, which is kind of sus, or they didn't know the full picture and even that. But what happened in one year, this guy was able to run from 1.5 billion all the way up to 35 billion using massive, massive leverage. And then it all came crumbling down because you can't do that when you're just playing with way too big a size. And now it's led to this federal agents arrest Archegos owner Bill Wong and a former top lieutenant. The FBI, if you're watching this uh, the day I'm posting it, arrested them early this morning. According to the indictment, Wong and Halligan corrupted the operations and activities of the family office known as Archegos and used it as an instrument of market manipulation and fraud. And basically just lot, they pulled it off through deceit, lies, and really gaming the system. The criminal charges followed the spectacular implosion in March 2021 of Archegos, which lost billions in mere days. Wong traded in a way that hid the true size of his positions and pumped Archegos' portfolio from $1.5 billion to $35 billion in one year. And he did this by running it up to 5% and then using derivatives opposed to buying stocks. So he just never had to report it. And they were arrested by FBI this morning. But just really highlight the insanity of this. Yes, did karma catch up to this? 100%. But this is how crazy it is. It's basically you lie to brokers and you lie to banks and you give them to give you more and more and more money to keep the gravy train running. And then you're like, well, how did the banks not look into this? Well, 
I would argue that the banks are pretty complicit too. Archegos did not respond to the proposal, and a week and a half later, on March 4th, 2021, the PSR analyst followed up to ask whether Archegos had any thoughts on the proposal. His contact at Archegos said he hadn't had a chance to take a look at it, but was hoping to look today or tomorrow. This is in response to when the margins started to get crazy, and they're like, dude, where's the money? What's going on? The way Archegos got away with it, they just didn't pick up the phone, folks. That is the thing that caused billions of dollars of losses and potentially a massive systematic issue. This was a systematic risk that put companies and banks and obviously a fund potentially over the edge. The defense was, uh, yeah, they got away. They just didn't pick up the phone. Billions of dollars were at stake. Trillions of dollars in leverage investments. No one was checking it. And they're like, oh, I'll just... No, uh, tomorrow, today, I, I, I'll maybe later. I just didn't check it. I'm not going to take the phone call. That's how this played out. That's the checking of these big banks. And then obviously, so the big banks are to blame. Obviously, the hedge fund is to blame. And yeah, regulators eventually caught up to it. But also, the damage was done. So did karma catch up 100%? Was it not enough a little too late? Also, probably yes. Let's see if they even what their jail sentence is, what their fines are. Obviously, time will tell. But these are two stories that just broke recently that I get it. If you're a retail trader, if you're a member of the ape community, I can understand where there's that clear frustration. Just like, what's going on? Like, how are regulators not looking into it? And it's just the wheels of justice turn slowly. But yes, I think there's something that we can hold on to, a positive thing that at least they're turning. And like I said, to start this off, Karma is a bitch. Let me know your thoughts in a comment below.